Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make dynamic footsteps in Blender. And what I mean by that, for those of you who are new to dynamics, it means we don't have to actually like animate with shape keys and like do keyframes for the actual displacement. It's going to happen dynamically. We're going to take something like a shoe or any object you want and you're going to make that thing a brush. And then any surface or object you want it to make an impression on, you can make that into a canvas. It's actually really simple. This is not an absolute beginner tutorial. You do need to know basics about Blender, but if you're already a beginner at Blender and you want to learn how to do this sort of dynamic interaction and make these sort of footstep animations. In this case, what we're going to be doing, keep watching. I am going to be putting um, my original result on Patreon. You can check that in the description or you can just follow along. We are going to be using free resources, but overall, this is really easy. If you already have your own character, by the way, I'll just quickly mention, you can skip ahead to the part where I do the dynamics. You don't have to do this. If you don't have a character ready or a scene, you can follow along with me quickly. I'll show you how to get a free Adobe Mixamo character with motion capture data already attached to it, bring it into Blender, make a quick scene, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it, and um, yeah, let's get into it. So if you don't already have an Adobe Mixamo account, you can go into the description below. I've got a link, and it's free to create an account, like I mentioned. So um, I've already got a character here that I've selected. If you want to select this, a character once you signed in, just go over here to the Characters tab, click on it, scroll through, and pick whichever character you want. Literally, it can be anything you want. Um, I just went with this character here called Megan. And then you can click here on the animations. Now that's the important bit. That's where all of the mo different mo capture motion capture examples are. Um, I'm gonna go something nice and slow, like a walk. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna type in walk. Um, you can choose whatever you want. I'm just gonna press enter to search. And um, just to demonstrate how this works, I'm not gonna go with anything fast. You can pick whatever it walks like you want. So I'm gonna pick something slow. Like here we can see we have like a kind of a limping example. Here we have just like a slow crawl. I'll probably go with something like that. You should now see whatever character you have selected. Over here you can see a live demonstration. By the way, you can upload any of your own models or characters and rig them. I have more tutorials on that stuff on other videos on my channel. You can check that out. Pretty easy stuff. But for now, we're just gonna use what we have here. The only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this down um, a little bit and we're gonna drag this up here. So we have a little bit more, a few more frames, okay? So if you see over here, we got 245 frames. Just drag these around until you get around 240, 250, that should be fine. Just so we have something to take in to Blender. And uh, once you're ready and you're happy with that, what you can do is you can go over here to download. Blender by default has 24 frames a second. If you're working with 30 or 60, go ahead. I'm just gonna choose 24 frames a second. And um, by the way, I didn't even mention these parameters. You can kind of change the, the kind of like the carefulness to override the gait of the character, how they walk. Um, but that's all um, not relevant to the tutorial at hand. So let's just get something to work with. So we're gonna just put that at 24 frames a second. We're gonna leave this as an FBX format and these things we won't touch. Go ahead and press download. And depending on your internet connection, um, this could take a few minutes, it can maybe take half an hour um, but you can see the file here is only 57 megabytes large so when it's done downloading I'll come back and I'll show you how to take it into Blender. Okay my file is now done downloading I've got it in my downloads and it's just called walking and if you right click and you go to your properties you're going to see this is an FPX file which is what we selected so for me what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this FPX file onto my desktop or anywhere on my computer or I can leave it in the downloads you put it where you want and then you're going to open up a new scene in Blender. Now let's just select all of the default objects here let's just delete them and I'll quickly also turn on my screencast keys just so you guys can see the keys I'm pressing okay so we're going to go to file we're going to go to import and we're going to select the FBX option in my case I put out on my desktop so I'm just going to go and grab that walking.fbx and we'll go import fbx and here you can see we now have this imported now what we have here is a simple rig doesn't have any inverse kinematics or controllers but each bone has a keyframe um, or a keyframe placed on it over this timeline here. So if you play it, you can see just a whole bunch of keyframes end to end, which is kind of cool. It's already done for you, um, but it just makes it a little bit hard to edit and, and control things. But this is already pre-made and that's a nice thing about it. So you can see here, if you just press the space bar, it's playing and it's, you know, it's roughly what we want. So what we're gonna do now, let's just make our frame 200. I don't wanna go too long with this animation. Let's just start at frame one over here. And what we wanna do is we wanna build an environment here for our character. So we're gonna go shift A, let's get a um, plane. And this plane or our environment is just where the character is gonna be walking. And that's where we're gonna be having our 
impressions with the foot. That's where the dynamic interactions can be happening. So we're going to go G, Y, and we're going to move it forward on the Y. So um, if we now tab into edit mode, we can see that this is just one face here. If we're going to be working with displacement, we do need some topology here. So what we're going to do, we do need to probably think about um, the, the length we want this floor to be. So in this case, I'm just going to grab these two verts in edit mode. I'm going to go G, Y, and I'm just going to move them forward. And then on frame one, I'm just gonna hit the space bar to see where our character stops here because we don't want it to be too short. Okay, so it stops about there, that's the right length. So what we need to do now is go Control R and just add in a segment in the middle just so we have two even faces roughly. And now we can press A to select everything. We can right click and click on subdivide. Let's go to our subdivide options here and let's make it 22. Um, if you have a more powerful computer, you can bump that up a lot. In fact, I might go with something like 30, but I'd recommend you don't go over um, 22 if you don't have a very powerful computer, just keep it low. And then we're gonna tab out. And then on top of that, we're gonna be adding a subdivision surface modifier. And it's very important that we have that. Um, I'm gonna untick optimal display so I can kind of see the density. Um, let's just bump it up even maybe to two and then over here in the render, bump it up to four. Now you, you, we are gonna to have to apply this later before we bake any dynamics, but we'll get into that. But now we have a nice high density surface here. We have a character walking and it's also just important to check from the side that the feet are actually going through the dirt here because at the moment we won't get any displacements. So we're gonna go G, Z and just move that floor up like that just so those shoes are at least a little bit embedded here inside of the floor so we can actually see that nice displacement. We're also gonna quickly go Shift A. Let's just add in a camera so we have a nice camera following along and um, go into your camera view and then just move your camera back. So I'm not gonna you know, like mention how to move a camera because this is not an absolute beginner's tutorial. Most of you should know, but what we are gonna do with our camera settings is we're gonna go and make it 75 on the focal length, or maybe even 95. Let's go with 95, so we have that nice shallow depth of field. And on frame one, we're gonna just move our camera somewhere, maybe like where this foot is over here. And we're gonna go I, and we're gonna insert a location and a rotation keyframe for that camera. We're then gonna move up to about frame 50, and we're gonna go G with our camera active. And we're gonna move it up a little bit, and we're gonna go I, insert a location and rotation. And we're just gonna go up to 100 and do the same, move it up a little bit. And you can do this however you want. You can rotate your camera, move your camera, but once again, just pressing I, adding in a location and a rotation. And so we will continue all the way up to the end of our animation. So over here, she slows down a little bit. So I'm gonna go I, insert a location and rotation move up, um, let's go to about 180 and then move it up even further. So how you wanna do this is completely your decision. Okay, so let's end it there. So let's just go to frame one. Let's play this and see what it looks like. Okay, great. Now, one thing we can also do real quick, um, just to add a little bit of noise and shake to the camera, let's just real quick jump into our animation editor here and let's just go drop down here and go and make this a graph editor. And let's just come over here, drop down, look at our different um, transforms here. Let's just hide all of these, except for the Z location on the camera. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of noise to that. So we're gonna over here, press N to bring up the properties panels. We have that location selected. We're gonna go to modifiers, add a modifier, give it a noise. And now if we go into our camera view and hit the space bar, you can see it's jumping up and down a lot. But if we increase the scale over here of the noise, you can see it's a little bit um, less like quick. It's a little bit more spaced out, but the strength here is way too big. So let's make it 0.2. And you can mess around with these two things here, the scale and the strength, and just having a little bit of random shakiness in the camera as it goes up and down really makes it feel like somebody's holding it. So there's a quick little tip for you, and uh, you could easily um, add as many of these modifiers as you want. So let's go back to our layout. Now we have an animation, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually get into the part where we add our dynamic brush to the shoes, and then the dynamic canvas to the floor here, and hopefully that's gonna answer some of your questions. So let's start by creating our brush, which is essentially gonna be any item that we want to be making the impression with. So in this case, it's gonna be the shoes of our character, and also, I'll just quickly mention, you can see here that the shoes are a separate object, which is also really interesting. You may have a character that's a whole object. You could separate the shoes if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, it's kind of, it's always just nice to have a smaller brush and not have the whole thing to be the brush if it doesn't need to make contact. Anyway, just select the shoes in this case or whatever object you're following along with. And then you're gonna go over here to your physics properties and you're gonna go to something called a dynamic paint. Now down here, you have some two very simple options. You have a brush or a canvas. In this case, it's the brush because it's gonna be making the imprint. 
you're gonna click on add brush. It's important to actually click on the add brush. At this point, nothing more you have to do here for this tutorial. Let's click on the actual floor or the surface where we're gonna be having the indent and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the physics properties, give it a dynamic paint. And in this case, it's obviously the canvas it's gonna be drawn onto. So we're gonna go add canvas and we're gonna be working with a vertex format, not a image sequence. So we're not gonna be exporting any image sequences. And then you're gonna go down here to the surface type and we don't wanna make paint here. We're not doing like a painting or drawing. And we're gonna go with displace. So displace here. And then what we're also gonna do is, um, if you actually were to play this now from frame one, you can see there isn't anything happening because we do need to also go to our modifiers in which case you will see we have our subdivision surface modifier from earlier. We have our dynamic paint now on our floor and we can go and give this now a displace under our modifiers. You're gonna click on new and you can see here that the floor is sitting way down here. So what you can do is you can just adjust your mid-level. In this case, we're gonna bring it all the way down to zero, okay? So now if we go to frame one, go to camera view and we press the space bar and we follow along you can see we are leaving footprints here in the ground. How cool is that? And that is simply how easy it is. That's really all there is to it. Just quickly right click and go shade smooth with this floor selected. Now the nicer, um, the more you bump the subdivision up here, the nicer that's obviously gonna look. But you see, I just bumped it up there and this all disappeared. That's because this is being kind of cached in. It's, it's being, um, there's a whole bunch of data somewhere while you're running this. So if you change any of these parameters, that changes. So once you're actually happy, so in this case, I bumped the, the viewport level up. Once you're actually happy with the result, in this case, I'm gonna go something like free. You can now go and you can apply that subdivision surface modifier. Okay, because when we actually come to the point where we, we bake this into our blend file, or we, so it's permanent, um, you do need that geometry to be actually be there. It can't just be something like a surface operator or a modifier, it has to be applied. So if you tab into edit mode, you can see this mesh is super dense. Okay, for some of you that might be a bit limiting, um, but just keep that in mind. Um, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna um, give this perhaps another subdivision surface modifier just to smooth it out a little bit. But this one, um, we, we can kind of disable. We don't need to see it in real time. That one will only be running at a render of one afterwards. So if I quickly enable this, you can see it just smooths that out. But if we were to have this on top of all of this density and we played it in real time, you can see it's very laggy. So just keep that turned off and that should be a big help. So um, what we're gonna do next, um, at this point, you know, if you've learned how to do the dynamic part, that's all good, you can keep watching if you want to, but if you're following along with this little animation, we're gonna quickly jump on the internet and get some nice textures we can put here on our ground. So if you look in the description below, there's gonna be a link to this um, shader on Polyhaven, it comes with the textures. In fact, we don't have to do any of the node work because all you have to do is come here to download. You can see there's actually a Blender symbol here. So I'm gonna go with the 4K, I'm gonna go download for the Blender version here. Blender is selected. And it's gonna go ahead and download that. And then I'll show you how to import that shader into Blender. And then we have pre-made ground, which is gonna make things um, pretty easy for us. Okay, that's done downloading. So I'm gonna quickly jump into my downloads. And here it is. Um, it should be a zip folder. So you're just gonna go ahead and extract it like you would of any other zip folder. And inside of there, you're gonna see this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take that, drag that extracted folder onto my desktop. Let's jump back into Blender. And if you're following along, all you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to file, you're gonna go append, go to your desktop, wherever that extracted folder is. So here it is, the, the brown mud. And then just go, click on this blend file, and then you're gonna go and go to the materials, and in there you should see brown mud. So click on that and go append. And now that whole material with the node setups and textures is appended into a blend file. All you have to do is select your floor. Obviously go to your renderer first. Let's just make it cycles. If you have a GPU, make sure to enable it. If you don't, just stick to CPU. And now we're gonna to go to our materials properties. We're gonna click on new. Come to the drop down and now you should see brown underscore mud and if you now press z and you go rendered and um, obviously there's no lights in the scene but you can see there's some materials let's just go Control b or command b and just drag over our camera views just to limit the render to the camera that's just going to help us with viewport performance and then we're going to go over to our world settings and we're going to go to the um, our world properties i'm going to click on the color tab thing here and we're going to just go and give this a sky texture and um, let's just go all the way through to the beginning here, somewhere nice like that. And let's just press Z. Let's just go into rendered. And now we can see we have that light. So this is a bit strong. So I'm just gonna make the strength of the light 0.7. 
And you can also mess around with the sun rotation, um, whatever works for you, but that's looking pretty nice. And um, let's just also just go to our shading workspace real quick and go into the camera view again. Make sure you're in rendered. And what we're gonna do here is, we'll just, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the mid-level and take it down to 0.2, okay? And that's a lot better. And also, we just wanna make sure that this is not relying on the UVs. Let's just take the object and plug it into the vector instead. And now if we press Z and we go rendered, yeah, we can see it's everywhere and it's pretty consistent. So let's just go back to our layout. And one thing I've realized is that we're following the feet along, but we can't actually see the footprint embedded. So let's just quickly select our camera and let's just go to frame 50. And in frame 50, let's just enable auto keying and let's just go G and let's just move our camera back so you can actually see that last footstep over there. So what we're actually gonna see is this. Okay, that. And then it goes here. But at about frame 80, let's just go G, move the camera back a little bit. So there's a little bit more of a hold there so we can see that footprint happening. Uh, maybe even, let's just drag that keyframe we just made up even a little bit more. So just so we can still see that footprint. Okay, and then yeah, it moves along. So just so we can at least see the footprints happening. Otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of the animation here. We did want to see those nice, um, dynamic footprints taking place here. Okay, cool. So that looks a lot better. Turn off auto keying. You can do whatever you want with the animation. But now, um, if you want to render this out as a final animation, all you have to do is go over to your output settings, click on this folder here, select your desktop or whatever, and then you can select whatever format you want to. You can do um, sequences and then composite them together in another software, or you can just make it a video, choose your encoder, like an MP4 or something, completely up to you, and then you can go render and then render the animation. But that has been this tutorial. I hope you guys have found it interesting, but also I am really stupid because I forgot to mention this. Um, you have to actually, if you were to render this out as an animation, you're not gonna see any of these footprints because we have to actually bake it. So make sure to bake it, okay? This is really important, this will not work. So what we need to do is select the, um, the floor here, we need to go over to our physics settings, we need to scroll down and we need to come here and bake. Okay, and it's gonna bake this into our blend file. Well, actually it's gonna create a little folder next to our blend file, wherever it is. And now it's baked in, make sure to save. And in fact, I'm gonna quickly show you what I mean. So if we now go to, if I go, I'm going to my, um, wherever it's stored, so I'll just show you quickly. You can see in the same folder that my blend file is stored, it's created this blender cache and you can see all of this stuff here. So make sure that folder is always there or if you want to, you can delete it and rebake. But the whole idea here is to make sure you bake that in first and then you can go render and render that animation. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure to upload all of this stuff to my Patreon. You can check that in the description below. You can also check me out on Skillshare. And if you use my link in the description, you can get it for cheaper. And it's definitely worth it. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there. And all of my courses come with um, the resources and stuff. So make sure to check that out as well. And I'll see you guys next time.